How's it going? My name is Kat, and today I'm going to be hauling some books and talking a little bit about what I've been reading this summer. Because I've actually been reading a ton, but I haven't been reading a ton of novels. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. For now, I'm going to start things off by hauling some books that I haven't yet read. So first up, I have here Bloodleaf and Greythorn by Crystal Smith, and I received these from the publisher HMH who I'm working with for this video. And these are the first two books in what is going to be a high fantasy trilogy. The first book, Bloodleaf, I have talked about before when it first came out and it had a different cover. The series got a bit of a cover revamp and I definitely prefer the new design to the original. Original. I just love illustrated covers and I'm so glad that that's like the trend right now in YA books. This series is about a princess who feels like she's a prisoner to her crown and she also has forbidden magic that she is burdened with keeping secret. But when an assassination attempt reveals her magic, she is forced to flee and go on the run, disguise herself as a commoner, and kind of start over. But of course, starting over is not that easy, and she finds herself not only seeking revenge against the assassins who drove her out of her kingdom, but also swept up into a deadly new mystery in this new kingdom. I've heard really good things about this series, and I'm really excited to get to it. It has all the things about high fantasy that I love, you know, magic and romance and politics and power struggles. And now that book two just recently came out, it seems like a pretty good time to jump into this world. Next up, I have an arc of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. And I was actually quite surprised to receive this because I didn't request it. And I feel like a lot of publishers aren't doing physical arcs right now. So when this showed up, I was just over the moon. Victoria Schwab is one of my favorite authors. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year. It comes out in October, so the official release is not too far off. It's a standalone adult fantasy. And basically, this is about a girl named Addie LaRue, who in the 1700s, she strikes up a deal with a devil. She is going to be able to live forever but she'll also be cursed to be forgotten by everyone she meets. But 300 years after making this deal, she ends up meeting someone who remembers her name. I cannot wait to read this. Like, again, Victoria Schwab is one of my favorite authors, and the premise to this just sounds so cool. Although, personally, the whole catch to the deal about how, like, oh, no one's ever gonna remember you, that doesn't sound like a bad thing to me. Like, I would actually be really into that. <laughs> like, I get to live forever and also no one is allowed to think about me? That sounds great. I hate that I exist in other people's heads. <laughs> but maybe that's just me. Either way, I'm still very excited to give this a read. Next up, I have here Something to Talk About by Meryl Wilsner. And this is a contemporary adult romance about this woman who's like a big Hollywood powerhouse and she gets photographed on the red carpet making her assistant laugh. And the tabloids who have captured this moment declare the two women a secret couple. And as the gossip starts to get out of control and starts affecting both of their personal lives, the two women are spending more and more time together and they're starting to realize that the gossip might not be completely unfounded after all. But is pursuing this relationship gonna be worth all the gossip and drama that is already surrounding them? I am very excited to read this one. I talked about it in my most anticipated books of spring video because I'm always down for a sapphic romance. And I also really like the Hollywood setting. I tend to enjoy books that explore navigating a queer relationship and sexuality under the public eye, because I think that's kind of an interesting dynamic. So yeah, excited to give this one a go. The next book I have here is Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. And this is a contemporary YA about a teenage boy named Felix who wants to fall in love, but he secretly fears that because he's black and queer and transgender, that he's one marginalization too much and it's not gonna be easy for him. But when an anonymous student starts harassing Felix with transphobic messages, 
Felix launches a plot for revenge. But what he doesn't expect is that this revenge plot kind of lands him in the middle of a quasi-love triangle. And that puts Felix in this complicated situation where he has to navigate his feelings and also kind of sets him off on this journey of self-discovery. I have heard so many good things about this book. Like a lot of people whose tastes align with mine have said this is like one of their favorite books of the year. So. Yeah, I, I, I need to read that. I, I need to get to this already. The next book that I have here is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is an adult contemporary romance that was not on my radar at all until I saw a bunch of people on Twitter raving about this and I looked up the synopsis and was immediately sold. Basically, it's about two authors who write wildly different genres. One author writes serious literary fiction, while the other writes romance with happily ever afters. The only thing they have in common is that for the next three months they're living in neighboring beach houses to try to finish their novels and they're both bogged down with writer's block. They end up striking a kind of deal to force them out of their creative ruts. They are essentially going to switch genres and write books that the other one would write. So yeah, this sounds like something I'm gonna love. I love books about writers. And the premise of this just has so much potential for like fun romantic shenanigans. I cannot wait to give this a go. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about what I have been reading these last few months. Again, I have not been reading many novels. We'll get into that in a minute. But I have read some because of Booksplosion. So let's talk about those real quick. So for June, we read You Should See Me in a Crown by Aaliyah Johnson. This is a contemporary YA debut novel about a teenage girl named Liz whose scholarship to medical school kind of falls through and all of her dreams feel like they're crashing down until she remembers that her school offers a generous scholarship to whoever wins prom queen. And being in the spotlight, running for prom queen, is really not Liz's scene, but she doesn't have a lot of options, so she reluctantly enters herself into the competition. Things get a little more complicated, though, when Liz starts falling for another one of the girls running for prom queen. I really enjoyed this book. It was really fun and just exactly what I was in the mood for when I read it. And as fun as all the prom competition shenanigans were. I think my favorite part about this was all the different relationships. There's the romantic relationship between Liz and Mac, which was really sweet, but there's also some great friendships that are handled with just about equal weight with the romantic relationship. And there's also some great family dynamics as well. It was just a really sweet, heartwarming book, and if you like queer contemporary romance and you haven't yet read this, I highly recommend it. And if you have read this and you want to know more of my spoilery thoughts, I'll link the Booksplosion live show discussion down below and you can check that out. Next up, let's talk about the Booksplosion book of the month pick for July, which was Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds. This is a YA mostly contemporary. There is a little bit of magic in that there's a time loop. Basically, it's about a boy named Jack who meets this girl Kate they fall in love, and then Kate dies. This is not a spoiler, by the way. It's like the whole premise of the book. And that should be the end of their story, but instead Jack is sent back to the beginning where he meets her for the first time, and he gets to relive their three months together and try to save her. I loved this book. Like, it's, it's one of my favorites of the year. And some of that is due to the story itself, which is a really interesting exploration of choices and consequences and what you have the power to change. But what I adored the most about this book was the writing and the voice. For a book about a girl who keeps dying and the boy who keeps trying to save her, this book was actually a lot more heartwarming and funny than I was anticipating. Jack's voice is just so good. He is such a fantastic narrator. Like this book is almost 500 pages and it doesn't feel like that because you just fly through it. So yeah, I loved the writing and the voice, the banter between 
Jack and Kate and also Jack and his friends. It, it's just so much good here. And again, if you've read this and want to know more of my spoilery thoughts, the Booksplosion live show is linked down below. And then I have here the Booksplosion Book of the Month pick for August, which was War Cross by Marie Lu. Now I've already hauled this book because I've had it for a while, it's not a recent release. But I just read it, so I figured I'd talk about it at least a little bit here. This is the first book in a duology that is a very grounded sci-fi. It's a very recognizable world, it feels very contemporary, except for the fact that there's this awesome virtual reality. And there's this game within the virtual reality world called War Cross, which is like a really cool version of Capture the Flag. It has these two teams and they're trying to capture each other's artifacts. Our main character is a girl named Amika. She is a hacker and she uses her hacking skills to track down criminals in the real world as a bounty hunter. But when she accidentally hacks her way into a very public game of Warcross, she ends up famous overnight. And with her new fame comes a job offer from the creator of Warcross, this billionaire genius who Amika has kind of looked up to her whole life. Someone is trying to maliciously hack into the Warcross world, and Amika is tasked with infiltrating the Warcross tournament and tracking this person down, using her skills as a hacker and her skills as a bounty hunter to solve this mystery of who's trying to hack into Warcross and what they are doing it for. I really enjoyed this book. I love Marie Lu's writing and world building. Her stories are so vivid and fun. I loved the whole setup of the Warcross game and the virtual reality. Like this might be my favorite book involving virtual reality that I've read yet. Like a lot of the other ones are really depressing and this was more on the fun side. Um, though we do end up with a pretty interesting moral quandary by the end of it. I am so hyped to read book two, the, the second book in this duology, Wild Card, and I will be doing that very soon, very, very soon. But yeah, again, if you want to know more of my spoilery thoughts, the Booksplosion live show discussion will be linked down below. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about what else I've been reading this summer, because I said I've been reading a ton, and I really, really have. So let, let me tell you what I've been reading. So this summer, I have been extremely obsessed with Haikyuu. Haikyuu is a manga and an anime about volleyball. For the longest time, I had this very firm belief that I don't like sports anime because I don't really care about sports. So sports anime is like a no thank you. But it turns out that two of my all time favorite anime are sports anime. So like maybe, maybe I, maybe I like sports anime? I, I don't know. So I first watched the anime, all three and a half seasons that are currently out. The rest of season four is coming out in a couple weeks and I am hyped. I watched three and a half seasons of this anime and then I watched it again. And then I decided I needed to read the 400 volume manga. So I did that twice. <laughs> so yeah, I've watched and read everything at least twice all the way through. And then there are some episodes and chapters that I have read more than the twice. I was and still kind of am shocked at how much I enjoyed this because uh, at least for me, I tend to gravitate toward stories that have a strong romantic element. And any romantic element in Haikyuu is something that is more uh, interpreted than actually canon. Although I could talk at length about the ships in the show that I like. However, even though the relationship dynamics aren't necessarily romantic, they are still so interesting and compelling. This series has some of the best depictions of rivalries that I have ever seen. There's rivalries between players, there's rivalries between teams, there's friendships that are based on a rivalry. And one thing that I really, really enjoy about these rivalries is that there's not a lot of cruelty in them. Like, 
They're very wholesome rivalries. It's not like a I'm gonna sabotage you kind of rivalry. It's like I want you to play your best so that I can beat you when you're at your best. Good shit. Real good shit. And the characters the character, you guys, the characters. It's the kind of thing where like you could ask a hundred different people who's your favorite character from Haikyuu and get a hundred different answers because all the characters are so richly developed and so many of them have such great dynamics where they complement and contrast each other in beautiful ways. So yeah, I love Haikyuu like a lot. And in addition to reading this like 400 chapter manga series multiple times. I have also been reading so much fanfic. So much fanfic. I've never been one to read a lot of fanfic. Like over the years, I've read a couple that were really popular that got recommended to me. But until Haikyuu, I never spent days just browsing and reading fanfic. I just love these characters and their dynamics so much that I I wasn't satisfied with just the manga and the anime. I have spent my summer reading so much fanfic and I have no regrets. It's been great. I've had a great time. Sure, not all of the fanfic is good, but that's what happens when you spend weeks browsing through the archives and just clicking on anything you can get. And while not all of it is good, some of it is really, like, really, really good. It's, it's so good. But yeah, anyways, that's what I've been doing this summer. Just reading a lot of fanfic. And maybe writing a little bit, but we're not gonna talk about that. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video, I think. Yeah, I think I'm done. Uh... <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had a good summer. I hope you have a lovely night. And I will probably have another video up eventually. So I'll see you then. Bye!